This hour for you on Daybreak, Medicaid could be expanding in the state. We'll explain what that would mean for Missouri residents. And the difference between a face covering or a face shield and which one gives you better protection. We'll hear from a doctor in just a few minutes. We also take a look back at a local icon's legacy celebrating the life of David Leong. That's all ahead this hour for you on Daybreak. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Today is Wednesday, July 22nd. I'm Jennifer Abreu. And I'm Joe Morano. Perusing the social media yesterday, saw a lot of people eating cashew chicken in memorial oh, of that. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Sad news we heard yesterday, and I have to say I haven't yet had cashew chicken since I've lived in Springfield. Don't admit and that. I, I know, I know. <laughs> so I know that's something I have to do. Yeah, uh, that's on the list for sure for you and likely is for Elisa Rafa too, I believe, right? And don't you want to try that out, Elisa? Yes, also never had it. So I say we take a day, day break trip and go try it out. We'll go. Yes. Because we can't, we both, we've both been here for so long and you're right, we should not admit this on TV that we've been here for it so long and never of, had it. Awful. It is kind of embarrassing. But yeah. Joe, you have had it? Yeah. So what, what, how, how did that happen? How did that happen? <laughs> I heard about it. So my first week living here, I got it. Really? Yeah, wow. oh yeah. I did that early on. I, I got there early, but I'll eat it with you guys as uh, we pay a little tribute, which we'll We're do not inviting you. later <laughs> here too. Oh, we yeah. invited you. <laughs> you know what? All right, I'll just put you on blast that you're admitting to everyone you haven't had it. That's insane to me, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. It is on the list of things to do. So yeah, we'll do that. ASAP. Also on the list of things that we all wished for a little bit in July was a little bit of rain, and some of us got that. A not few. everyone though. Yeah, some very lucky few of us. It's really incredible. As some of us got over an inch of rain this morning and some of us got nothing. Um, we do have some wet roads in Springfield because we did get um, a little bit of a locally heavy downpour to roll over uh, Springfield this morning. So some roads are wet down on the square. It is 72 degrees in Springfield with some dew points over 70. The storms that we had have really um, dissipated a little bit. They're moving to the east as well. So very few of us still looking at some of these showers. They've pretty much exited Springfield this morning. You've got some more moderate uh, to heavy rain stretching from Lebanon south of Plato and over towards Houston. There's some lightning in these storms this morning as well. Uh, they're pushing again out to the east. It's 73 degrees in Branson, 71 in Fort Leonard Wood, and 72 degrees in Springfield. Dew points are at uh, 70, so it is pretty humid out there this morning on the muggy meter map. So we're looking at some wet roads possible this morning, and a lot of us are dry hit and miss storms out there today as well. On the patio, you'll have some clouds, maybe a storm or two with some locally heavy rain and lightning. Temperatures back up around 90 degrees. Uh, details on us uh, drying out by the weekend and some hotter temperatures returning. We we'll talk about that in 10 minutes. Elisa, thank you. And we are following some power outages caused by those storms here in the Springfield area. Let's take a look at the city utilities outage map right now. More than a thousand customers without power this morning. The big the most impacted area is that yellow orange area there. Um, and that means between 500 and 1,000 customers are without power. You also see some blue areas on the map, and that means less than 50 customers without power. Um, so pretty scattered right now, and we'll continue to follow those outages and update you as, we, as repairs are made throughout the morning. All right, under two weeks from now, Missourians will be voting on whether to expand Medicaid in the state after thousands were dropped from coverage last year. If passed, people between the ages of 19 and 64 would need to make about $17,000 or less per year. As a family, you need to make $36,000 or less annually. This vote would expand the number of people eligible for Medicaid. Dr. Dan Ponder with Drury says expansion would make it easier for many of the people drop from Medicaid last year to get back on it again. So yeah, it should be easier uh, for people who were dropped from Medicaid to get back onto it because like I said, it, it does greatly expand the number of people who are available, particularly pretty much anyone who meets those income requirements um, between the ages of 19 and 64. We already have it for 65 and above and then for some other uh, categories, but that's really where I think the biggest thing would come. People opposed to Medicaid expansion say it's too expensive and would be a bigger tax increase. This is on the August 4th primary ballot and if approved goes into effect July 1st of next year. 
Forsyth City Council unanimously approved a masking ordinance that will go into effect today. It means face coverings and masking signage are at all businesses inside Forsyth City limits or on land owned and managed by the city. The city also says one of the reasons for this is the increase of cases in Taney County by more than 100 in the last six weeks. As more grocery chains required masks at stores, Hy-Vee is preparing to hand out more than 3 million free masks to customers entering its stores. Starting on July 27th, the chain will distribute masks to those entering without one. Signs will be throughout the store reminding customers to wear a mask. Dr. Burton Bledson with the Northwest Medical Center in Arkansas says a face shield is a good addition to have as opposed to a face mask if you work in a job where it's essential to show your facial expressions. The shield is clear, easy to clean, and allows for better communication. And he says wearing a mask is still the best form of protection and recommends the combination of the two when distance is a concern. The you know, in groups of people, you're gonna be in close proximity, especially if you're gonna have prolonged periods of time. I think I think um, I think a uh, face shield and or safety glasses would be would be appropriate. He also says if wearing the shields still remember not to touch your face to prevent the spread of germs. The historic effort to find a coronavirus vaccine is coming to St. Louis. Both St. Louis University Center Vaccine Development and the Washington University School of Medicine are looking for thousands of volunteers for phase three trials. That's the last phase before FDA approval. Researchers say the trials will involve at least two of five vaccines on the verge of making it this far. Phase three studies thousands of people across the country. Researchers are looking for about 3,000 volunteers volunteers in the St. Louis area to be part of it who have not already tested positive for COVID-19. They will either get an actual dose of vaccine or a placebo. We're just going to see if getting the vaccine protects you from getting infected more than getting a placebo or a saline injection. Um, and um, we want to see if it protects people from getting infected, um, but we also want to see if it protects people from getting really, really sick. Trials will start in the coming weeks. The creator of Springfield Cashew Chicken, David Leong, passed away yesterday at the age of 99. He's best known for his impact on the local culinary scene and the culture of Springfield. Jesse Inman spoke to his family and friends yesterday about his legacy. This happened less than a month uh, before his 100th birthday. A long life full of adventure and perseverance. David Leong's legacy and family name have become synonymous with Springfield. His youngest son, Wing Wa Liang, says it wasn't easy for his father to become the culinary and cultural icon he's known as today. He's the one that taught you, you know, right from wrong, values of working hard, uh, coming over, uh, overcoming, you know, obstacles. Like when we first moved here in town in 1955, we were the only Asian family in town. After leaving the army, Leong moved to Springfield to continue his career as a chef. And he opened up his own restaurant, Leong's Tea House, in 1963 with a featured dish that has become as famous as David himself. When he opened up his restaurant, he goes, I want to make a dish that uh, will cater to Asians as well as Americans. So I'm in the Midwest, and what's the number one food that people love? They love fried chicken. And that's how he came up with cashew chicken. The dish took off, and it's now served all over the world. When Leong's tea house closed in 1997 after his wife's passing, David took a break from running restaurants until 2010, when he opened Leong's Asian Diner. There's not a lot of 89-year-olds that want to start a new career. But he goes, yeah, but I'm not like, you know, other people. His kind heart didn't go unnoticed by anybody, including his friends. He's always been a super friend of mine. Uh, we've had a a good time together and I'm certainly going to miss David. He's just one of those people that everybody loves. Even his competitors who he paved the way for. I know him is over 40 years, since 79 so far. My restaurant and 80% is a seven cashew chicken and spring sour chicken on it, what it creates. It. Springfield Chinese restaurant, everybody know him. Even doesn't know him but know his name on it. In Springfield, Jesse Inman knows Arcs first. Leong's visitation and funeral arrangements will be announced in the coming days. We've got more details on David's life as well when you see this story on Ozarksfirst.com.
Jesse did a very nice podcast that's on the website too. Um, we've got some rain out there this morning. We've got some locally heavy rain headed towards Houston with some lightning strikes. Uh, details on storm chances for today coming up next. From Cutter 10 Ozarks first, Jennifer Abreu, Joe Morano, and weather with meteorologist Alisa Rafa. This is Color 10 News Daybreak.